Hello and welcome to This Connect. And today we are talking about dreams. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. Uh, I think today the topic is derived from our podcast on dreams. Hmm. But I think it got taken in a very specific context. And I think there's a bigger right. context than that, which is you must dream of a big vehicle. Because when you have a big vehicle, then you can do so many things. Hmm. And I don't think that that's actually the case. You can do so many things is a bigger thing hmm. then you need a kind of vehicle to do those with right and i think what we are more or less discussing today in a, in short is that big things can come in really small packages and sometimes they are more fun in small packages right like for example danny pedrosa He's a sweetheart. <laughs> he is. And he's fast. And he is so tiny that once, when photographers were taking pictures of him standing behind the RC, not the KTM RC, the Honda RC, he actually disappeared behind his own helmet and they couldn't see him anymore. <laughs> so they had to tell him, no, come back out to the front of the motorcycle, otherwise they can't see you. He's that tiny. Just a little bit more uh, an explanation. When we were talking about the dreams, um, how to get your big bike or premium car, uh, I think that's how it kind of got construed because that's more expensive. But anything can be a dream, right? It doesn't have to be a big, expensive motorcycle. In fact, the dream can be expensive. Okay. The machine that is in the dream may not be expensive. Okay. So what the idea is that you don't need to have a big bike to have fun. You don't need to have an expensive car to really enjoy yourself. The dream for somebody at one point for me was just to have a two-wheeler, right? right? When I couldn't get one, it was unobtainium in that sense, right? You know, you, I couldn't even imagine having a two-wheeler and I really wanted one. That, that's why I said it. it mm. The dream will be expensive. It mm. need not include a big bike. Mm. Why was it unobtainium? Because you didn't have money for it. Right. And you had to work towards it to get it. So in that sense, I don't think the expense of a dream changes. It's always unobtainium. Otherwise, what's Correct. the point, right? Otherwise, you'd have done it by now. But... The idea that you need a specific kind of vehicle to unlock a dream. Right. I think that you can work around. And not all workarounds are inferior to the major result. And not all dreams are sidelined by the lack of a major vehicle. Hmm. I mean, think about it. Let's say that we wanted to, I don't know, go around the earth. We want to be a world traveler. And I want to take a motorcycle and go around the earth. Hmm. I have the choice of a Multistrada and the KTM right now. Would I really want to take the Multistrada? Although I don't think they're fundamentally more reliable than each other. I think they'll both do it in their sleep. But in Africa, a muddy road somewhere, and the bike is just not moving with all your luggage. Remember, you're living off the motorcycle at that point. I'd just rather be on the KTM because it'll be easier to drag it in and out of it than on a Multistrada. So certain dreams, I don't think going bigger is the solution. What's your perspective on this? I think we're in a golden age. Yeah. The whole move towards in motorcycles, the move towards the mid-displacement. Um, in cars, it's just featureization, right? The experiences in both places have come to a point wherein the step up to go from, let's say, a mid-displacement motorcycle to a big, what would be, a big motorcycle. It's not always that the step is, I mean, the jump is that big in terms of uh, outright ability that you can do. How you get from point A to point B qualitatively will change. But what you actually do, actually sometimes you might be taking a step back because you are having to manage so much more like you're talking about the multi versus the duke, right? So uh, I think off-road when we talk about it, like if you want to go take, uh, okay, great example, the Impulse. I've had it for eight, nine years, whatever, since the Impulse came out, right? Now, every time I thought I had maxed the motorcycle out, Right. And that this is it, this small 150 cc and it's enough. I've I've learned whatever I could. I need something more powerful. Something's happened. So uh, first time around in slush was, hey, I'm going to drop tire pressures down to ridiculous levels. Right. I used to run 14 PSI up front and the rear used to be 17, 18, something like that. Suddenly you're like I'm on the stock Seats. Right. And suddenly you found like, wow, so much more grip on offer and then I did that a lot I used to carry a pump with me I used to keep changing the pressures for road and off-road so I did all of that and then I was like okay this is done now 
then um, my friend giri happened you hmm. met giri yeah, yeah, right nutcase. yeah complete nutcase so he forced me and thanks to him in that sense he got me pirelli's proper nobby tires hmm. and those became like the next level unlock right right it was suddenly like the motorcycle is like just pulling up hill going where there literally no roads right hmm. and now you are out of your depth because you've never done those kind of inclines you've never done those kind of climbs and this is still that same bog stock impulse that's mm-hmm. all it's got nothing on it mm-hmm. right apart from those tires and then the next thing he did was he changed the front sprocket so i had more grunt i killed the top speed it, it's no longer but it's something. an impulse i mean what did you lose <laughs> yeah, no but like even from 100 km an hour you've come down to like 80 km an hour right so it's literally like now if i had to change the tires back to stock and uh, ride from pune to bombay uh, <laughs> it would feel tiring so right? we get you a turbo charger now <laughs> and get 20 bhp back so the impulse was a great lesson for me yeah. that i don't need something big hmm. in that sense to really unlock what i am capable of that allowed me so much more so since giri did so much for you right why don't you tell who giri is and what does he do quickly so that okay. they all know that there is a resource that they can unlock yeah so suraj giri is uh, you you would also see him as an instructor uh, he's been doing off road training courses he's in fact running the slide school the ari slide school in pune uh, with autolog which is at dirtlog so autolog dirtlog is a place uh, what is that place called <laughs> so marunji so autolog is the design studio it's called marunji right that place yeah, the, the uh, yeah i think so so yeah. marunji in pune is where this thing is autolog has a garage there and they have a space where they, you can do uh, riding in the dirt and stuff and obstacle courses and stuff and giri teaches sliding Now, and offloading yeah. there yeah. so if you he's a total nutcase but i believe he's a fantastic teacher so go figure this out i disagree on that count giri i'm looking right at <laughs> <laughs> okay so the other side of this if you think about it is a lot of people who are buying let's say an africa twin or a multistrada or a gsxr 1000 or a gsxs 1000 Let's say that we have a magic computer hmm. that basically turns off all the electronic aids tomorrow night. Oh, oh my god. What do you think is going to happen day after morning to all of these riders? I think just travel more okay, slowly. Okay, we'll, we we will be benevolent about this. We'll leave ABS on. Thank god. Okay. Yeah. We will switch off traction control, wheelie control, cornering ABS and all that. Basic ABS is still there. Do you think they're going to be able to enjoy their motorcycle as much as they're enjoying it today tomorrow with the aids gone? initially obviously not i think that the idea that a manufacturer can walk up to you in india especially without checking your license without checking your history and saying oh you've got 15 lakh rupees take this 130 40 50 90 200 200 bhp motorcycle and go live your life i don't think that life is possible without the electronics at all right it is the electronics that allow you to sell it because imagine hmm. let's say ducati sold and i'm just picking a name out of head this is nothing to do with ducati Uh, let's say 500 panigales yesterday hmm. and over the course of the next year out of those 500 400 people end up in hospital with various issues related to i didn't know what i was doing and then the bike was too fast for me how long before the government intervenes and say hello you cannot be selling the panigale to whoever walks in it's the electronic aids that are literally allowing the larger bikes to be accessed by a population that has to show no sign of responsibility that you are ready for this right So you're absolutely spot on when you upgrade from a 650 to a 900 or to 1100 or a 1200. You will definitely take a backward step first, but the forward steps are relying a lot on that technology, hmm. and that doesn't necessarily mean that your dream is moving forward. Because remember, the acquisition of the machine is a very small part of the dream. Why did I get the multi? Why do you have the impulse? Why do you have the Hayabusa? It's not for the ownership of it, is it? better version of you full stop it's the better version of you and it's because i want to do something with it right the tono was acquired because i fell in love with that motorcycle but with the very clear idea that this motorcycle needs to go out into this country hmm. with me in the saddle and do a few things hmm. and it led it naturally to a place where it's at the race track with me and i love riding it there hmm. but the riding it there is more important than the tono hmm. the tono is cherry on top but hmm. the cake is not the tono the cake is the race track still an expensive hobby to have <laughs> make no mistake but i think as we evolve initially i think the lack of a motorcycle makes the dream about i need that motorcycle and yeah. the lack of a car makes the dream about i need that car and then you get your first vehicles and then you're like wow this is so awesome i love it so i need to get that car hmm. 
hmm. which is like super special for whatever reason to you personally and same goes with motorcycles but as you get closer to it you begin to realize that it's not the vehicle it's what you'd like to do with it so uh, okay uh, at zigwheels we did this uh, series for adventure right uh, if you haven't seen that do check it out one, the last one we did was called sasta adv right which we took everyday motorcycles and scooters and uh, back then and said let's take them off road because this is where people use them and what we call as off road right is their normal environment right Correct. and time and time again you'll find is the these simple motors how many times has it happened that you've gone somewhere touring and the road is really bad and you're like figuring out how to take this section on and one little splendor or an activa goes past with the uncle and his wife sitting behind you and just potters past you <laughs> it's happened the worst i think we were in the run of kutch uh, we were shooting three mm-hmm. suvs mm-hmm. so we had an ml we had a 5 series back then mm-hmm. uh, and uh, i'm forgetting what the third mm-hmm. one was and i think the sand uh, the the uh, dust was getting to it so at one point the mercedes blinds was blowing literally the blows had a stream of brown air coming oh, out wow. of it because everything was so badly choked mm-hmm. and when we stopped to try and see what we can do about it chain tire pressures or whatever as soon as you'd stop one splendor would go by right. with the guy like what the hell are these guys <laughs> doing right you go to ladakh right. you'll get overtaken by altos left right and center yeah. because they don't seem to slow down for much but Correct. it's true right Absolutely. i remember at css the first time i went this was the second css to be held here that's yeah. california superbike school which is usually happens in chennai the coaches were on their cbr 600s and larger and it was good fun and they were really good at teaching us what to do and we had a lot of fun and then on the second day at the end they all sort of disappeared for a while and we were like where are they and at this point tvs was associated with css so they had a uh, access to a whole bunch of race prepped 160s oh, and nice. 200s yeah. they're having a coaches race uh-huh. i have never seen anything which was simultaneously more deadly serious and more hilarious at the same time uh-huh. every coach was desperate to win this ridiculous race hmm. but at the same time the bikes were so small that they weren't afraid of it so they were just pushing for everything they were worth including two guys huh. in turn 7 which is that long right hander they basically ground the bike out so much that it came around on them <laughs> <laughs> so they they slid huh. turned around in on the spot continued picked up and chased after the pack and when they came back they were all laughing their hearts out as if this was the best thing that they'd done all day right I mean they were coaching me but riding the RTR was the best thing that they did all day I mean think about it uh, uh, on this note if you haven't seen this just look up underbone uh, races so this is basically mm-hmm. uh, your MAT type vehicles you know step throughs in thailand they have races and you have to see what those races look like it's madness yeah it's madness so to me let's grow up a little bit because eventually you will i mean whether you whether we tell you to do it and you listen to us or not i think the acquisition of the object as a dream it lasts a while and it has its own space and pros and cons but i think you start to think larger as you get closer to that dream right because your finances also open up right that's how you're going to get the dream in the first place mm-hmm. then start thinking about what are you going to do with it and right. that's when the fun really begins right because there's not much in the automotive world that is actually cheap hmm would you like to ride in a, in the dirt a lot it starts cheap it becomes expensive very quickly hmm. would you like to ride at the race track starts expensive becomes even more expensive would you like to learn how to drift your car you'll be burning through tires every weekend it's expensive would you like to or drag racing there's lots you can do yeah, yeah if you want to go drag racing starts out very cheap and it's one of the easiest forms of motorsport there is simplest yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's simple and then it becomes very expensive very fast so they are all the same in that sense right but uh, have you toured this country i think we live in one of the most beautiful countries on earth and nobody is really seen this country end to end this is like a tourers buffet yeah yeah so if 1 and 1/2 lakh rupees for an exhaust versus 1 and 1/2 lakh rupees to tour the country yeah. touring the country will change your life the exhaust is going to change everybody else's opinion of you right uh i love hating on exhaust on i um similarly if you wanted to tour just southeast asia forget the world for a minute Mm-hmm. there's so many beautiful amazing distant remote places that you can go to with a motorcycle or a car yeah but to me the dream it's not about the vehicle right if i were to say you're desperate to tour this country do you really need like an 1100 cc africa twin to do this with yeah no what you need is time 
you need time you, you need the money to spend on the hotels you'll be staying at and the petrol that you'll be filling in what the petrol goes into is not central to the idea that you won't have a good time or not right like i'll tell you this that i've told you this before but i took uh, a scooty zest up Correct. to khardungla twice yeah i think of them as some of my best trips to ladakh ever hmm. and i've been there on a whole bunch of machines including a 100 cc motorcycle hmm. because you're going so slowly hmm. that you have time to see what you're passing through i remember the first time i went on the zest this is the koksar wala stretch hmm. in the valley and it's not a complicated stretch there's good roads and some very pretty valleys in there hmm. and on a motorcycle you see the valley far away because you can't see what's here because you're going too fast so you're riding on the scooter and you look up at the mountain and you're like I have never seen that glacier before mm. and have probably passed it what 14 times up to at that point right. and I have never seen it before right and I got to see it mm. and then we went forward and I think they stopped to film and Josh was leading the group and he was organizing that part and he radioed saying show me there'll be a 15 minute break you can't be in the frame so you mm. stay behind stayed mm. behind in a random place on the side of a road that I've ridden a lot mm. just being able to rotate my head in a 360 degree circle showed me so much more of that place Right. So when we went for reboot, you remember that little bridge at Sisu. I have known that bridge existed only because I took the scooter there. Otherwise, I didn't know that that bridge existed because it just, it's just gone. It, right. it disappears on you, right? Mm. So maybe a big vehicle as a dream is still its own thing, but on the way there, do other stuff with whatever you've got. You don't absolutely need them to live these dreams, right? And I think it's. important to go through this journey of evolution instead of just jumping because when you get there so i have uh, you met colonel colonel vidhi uh, so he used to be on a duke and he jumped to a z800 and 3 years later he sold it mm-hmm. right because he enjoyed it he really did and then the bike kind of started getting in his way of doing everything he Correct. wanted right because he had some issue with the radiator then tires were not available and all that kind of stuff since then he just unhesitatingly he said dude this is not working for me right he sold it he bought a himalayan back then the bs4 uh he clocked some 40000 kilometers in a year and a half so he would go from pune to wherever his posting was and come back on it since then he bought an interceptor then he bought a 390 adventure now he's just gone and used it to do whatever whatever bike he next fancied he yeah. picked, got it and used it completely Correct. he didn't i mean he went to a big bike and came back down saying you know what i just need to be out there yeah. right and in the same way a lot of uh, people are expecting that when you step up to the big bike and i remember this conversation that oh if you have a big bike you'll be able to do this no the bike doesn't enable you to do this no it doesn't never you have to bring that to be able yeah. to unlock it from the motorcycle yeah so to be able to get to that point so you can actually utilize the motorcycle fully that Yeah. Journey. Absolutely. And I don't think a lot of people understand it, but let me give you another example because this is hilarious. Hmm. Uh track school we are teaching me Anand Josh etc. And this dude shows up on a super splendor with a suitcase bungee corded to the back of a super splendor. Okay? Super. What's that guy doing there? And Anand being Anand is like he's a student. Hmm. Interesting. The dude says I want to be a racer and hmm. I wanted to figure out do I have it in me or not. So I thought the school would be safe. Mm. So he paid the money, rode his super splendor from Hyderabad to Coimbatore mm. to do the school. Mm. Opens his suitcase and there's leathers inside. <laughs> puts the suitcase in pit lane, puts on the leathers, and rides that super splendor really hard and really well. To the point where one of our industry colleagues was there, mm. who uh, gets upset rather too easily for his own like own good, right? and he was having this great track day and then super splendor passes him around the outside at some corner okay <laughs> and that's fine right and presumably he was not on a super splendor no he was on an r15 ah and that's not the point of the school hmm. he's learning he's learning hmm. they're learning at two different pace they have two different risk appetites so hmm. stuff changes and it's fine and we don't encourage a lot of one to one comparisons at the race track for this precise reason hmm. if you're not racing then who's ahead does not mm. matter mm. riding together well and supporting each other matters mm. but in that moment of heat being passed around the outside by a much smaller bike he was so upset that we found him in pit lane saying what's the point i've been walking for two days on riding <laughs> my and the super splendor guy completely disconnects from this conversation right he doesn't know that this is happening at the other another pit lane he was so thrilled with himself saying i think i have something mm. i can do this 
whether he did or not is not germane to the story hmm. he brought a super splendor from hyderabad to coimbatore rode it back with a suitcase on the back full of leathers for the express purpose of i want to have a good time at the race track hmm. and he did hmm. can i tell you that the guy on the r6 had more fun than the guy in the super splendor no i'm not sure yeah i'm not sure <laughs> but who had the most respect in the pit lane that weekend it was not the guy going fast on the r6 right because him we are used to Right. We see if the PC was riding my R6 at that yeah. point. That was his R6 at that point. We'd see PC going hell for leather on that bike the whole time, mm. and it was normal for us to say, "Wow, PC is so fast." Right. But a super splendor guy, right, going that kind of quickly, that is impressive. Yeah. I think that switch in your head, being able to throw that when it comes to motorcycles, because that's where rider evolution ability is key to the entire experience, yeah. right? And unlocking that. instead of focusing on what hardware you have i think can be a mistake i'd go so far as to say i'd go so far as to say it's never the hardware okay i think it's a very easy trap to fall into today where you think that if i want to go and be the life of the party then i must dress a certain way hmm. or if i want to be a celebrity on instagram then i must look like a certain type of person or say certain kinds of thing but that's not what life has ever been about and i don't think that's fundamentally changed in any way anywhere on earth yet right at the end of the day it's substance over appearance right right look at people in india who have become famous for what they say and i'm saying india as an example because we are not a country that is aesthetically very advanced always we have a huge variation in our uh, uh, ability to assess our aesthetic appearance and work with it but there are some extremely badly dressed people saying extremely intelligent things and finding their voice and there are some extremely well dressed well dressed people who make no sense at all mm-hmm. and they get no traction at all mm-hmm. it's not about that you respect people like giri not because giri rides a very fast 450 cc yamaha it's because he takes any motorcycle and does amazing things on it the super splendor guy earned his respect by taking a very very mundane motorcycle and doing something which was completely within the motorcycle's ability envelope but pushing it to a level mm. which very few people ever will mm. and what's more satisfying a slow lap on a tourno or a really fast lap on a on a ridiculous machine like uh, i remember this ride on the achiever 150 mm. you remember the achiever 150 yeah i do meant to be a commuter hot delhi day we were on the uh, at the indira gandhi indoor stadium in new delhi mm. and we would basically they drew a lap out mm. and i was having so much fun with it that when i stopped i was in active heat exhaustion hmm. like when heroes people tried to come and talk to me and tell me that the lunch is ready or whatever i couldn't move from in front of the cooler and i was drinking water because i was so dehydrated from hmm. but it was such a terrific ride to have where my camera person ishan was with me at that point so i remember ishan telling me saying i can see how much fun you're having i'll try and get my shots around you you do whatever you want to hmm. and ishan found another vehicle to go around the track and take pictures of me so that i was not interrupted huh. it was hilarious how fun that motorcycle was right another great one is the handicap race that i've told you about where we had a hornet a achiever oh, a himalayan yeah. and this thing right everybody who participated in that race all mm. guys who ride super bikes mm. they all remember that handicap race as something special mm. but why mm. because you can take something small and make it do something extraordinary much more easily than take something extraordinary and then fail to do the simple with and so this for, the example for this for me every time is the nano so i used to have a nano right and people used to be shocked because i used to use it regularly to go from pune to bombay and back which was like a weekly thing for me right and uh, the nano does were 100 and what was it 108 kilometers an hour mm. was the speed cap but that car i kid you not used to be the most thrilling vehicle to drive on those highway stretches because you are maxed out right and not just at the engine <laughs> yeah so you feel like you're doing stuff so in that small car there was so much excitement there was so much sensation right mm. so you could really soak it all in like you couldn't escape the experience of driving fast like today if you get into a really high performance car 100 120 kilometers an hour feels like 40 yeah right there's no sense of speed in that sense you have to get to really serious speeds yeah. to feel that rush or the excitement which is why today i think uh, the the high performance cars are something they become so capable that to really feel that moment mm. 
the place to do it would be a race track i don't know how you could do that on a public road or maybe for a burst you know like for an instant you could do it right? and it would still be wildly legal in that instant yeah because it will get to 100 in what like high end cars are like doing 2 and a half seconds 2.6 seconds yeah, yeah. and they don't feel like much you know? if you just gently cruise any of these fast cars to 100 kmph you won't even notice when 100 kmph is achieved right but i think the point that karthik made is the important point here mm-hmm. that when he had the nano he didn't think of it as a small car he thought of it as a car in which he could do stuff and doing stuff i think is the key to the dream right you can sit on youtube all day hmm and rack up a very large watched hour count what have you done how will you explain this to your children 10 years or 20 years or 30 mm-hmm. years from now mm-hmm. saying this is what i achieved in that really productive 3 months where i exclusively stayed on youtube 24 hours a day nothing but if you spend those 3 months on a motorcycle just go literally anywhere or the nano or a, <laughs> any car <laughs> any car at all yeah. you would have fun with it. yeah haven't we found altos and splendors in the most oddest corners of earth alto to is in that sense like, legend now yeah. the guys driving those cars there are the locals doing their local stuff it's Correct. the same as you taking your fancy car or non fancy car and going to the shops or whatever they're doing just that mm-hmm. but when you put that context with that car together it blows your mind yeah so don't you think you should think about that as an adventure that you should be on what if you took a splendor a nano a rtr 160 average good motorcycles or cars and then went to a super exotic place on them what an experience would that be and keep in mind that the reason why i said we're in a golden age is because what we can manage or what ability a particular class of vehicle can bring to you what it can do has transformed it's never been this good i think never which is why that sweet spot like the 390 duke right and th- that's where the idea of this podcast came from somebody mentioned in that uh previous podcast in the comments saying that you guys are just talking about big bikes and i said to him that you know what there's a reason why shumi and i love the 390 yeah because that bike just is outperforms any kind of expectation that you can set for it correct right it's only when you ride and experience with other vehicles more powerful bigger displacement vehicles you realize that this is a massive unlock yeah right and in the same way if you look at cars as well there was a time when you spent under 10 lakh rupees for a car the difference between this experience versus something that cost 30 40 lakhs would be dramatic yeah it would be dram- that's not the case today yeah and i think we've come to a place where a reasonably priced vehicle today from almost any class that's a very do, high bar yeah they set a very high bar and they literally do almost anything you ask them to and i would say since numbers are easier for people to understand if you can get yourself a motorcycle that produces anything close to 40 bhp hmm. let's call it plus minus 5 bhp either side 99% of everything that you dream of doing is now doable and this includes going fast at the race track as well as going anywhere you like in that bracket today there are a few good motorcycles and this bracket is about to expand dramatically which is the other podcast that we did yeah. but you get to about 40 bhp you get to a 160 top speed It Just gives you the ability to cruise at almost any speed you choose between 60 and 110, which covers 99.98 percent of all the Indian roads ever. They will not allow you on the expressway, no matter the fact that we pay most of the taxes, the two-wheeler guys. But they still won't allow us, mm-hmm. and I understand why. But that 120 cruise legally you cannot achieve. So all you need is a 40 bhp bike, and you can do anything you want. Off-road 40 bhp is a heck of a lot of horsepower to deal with. on tour it is perfect to have pillion luggage and not notice the strain yeah what would be the same kind of number for for a car what would you need i think today you're looking at you know in the region of 90 hospa 100 hospa that's and that's it that's enough that's enough and this is what a 12 lakh rupee car max yeah and and the other interesting thing is mechanical ability one thing right engine performance one thing i think the big differentiator between mass market cars and premium cars used to be suspension right how well they treated you today the cars are so good even in the mass market space that if you jump from a um, mid-size sedan to a premium car the difference will be insulation mm-hmm. it will be materials in use the actual uh, how the car is operating it's a pretty high standard yeah and They're, after that there is refinement and polishing that happens a lot of of course but the baseline is very high now exactly it's not like you go from something that feels crude or tiring to something that's magical you know in mm-hmm. the 
in the cha- i mean the experience is not changing to a level where suddenly you feel like wow like the reason why i used to go wow about all these high end cars used to be because the experience was that different it's not the case anymore today they are trying to that's why everybody's focusing on technology the experience is moved towards technology right. the features and on that note keep in mind today at 15 lakh rupees what mass market cars are offering you often luxury cars hmm. which will cost six times as much don't have them so even on the features front you might think and it's happened very often people have said are i'm looking to buy that you know whatever one of the germans and like yaar usme ye nahi hai ha like <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah no but I, i basically what we are saying is it is important to dream and if you don't dream are you really human right and if you're not human maybe you're here too early because in another 30 40 years not being human will not be such a big challenge in this society i think but the dream cannot stop at acquisition it has its own charm don't get me wrong if you're just driving your first desire then the dream of the porsche or the mercedes benz is a very very valid and it's a hard dream to chase and i get all of that it's true for motorcycles too if you have a pulsar 150 or an apache 160 and you're dreaming of a duke 390 or something larger valid but don't stop there and if you think about what you do with that dream vehicle then you'd realize some parts of the dream are achievable much earlier than the vehicle itself and today given how well they are engineered how well they are priced in some cases your ability to do those things is not germane uh, is not central to the idea that i have that vehicle now i was about to ask him what does germane mean germane means central to huh. is it about that huh. So your ability to live parts of that dream can begin now before that dream vehicle itself arrives. Hmm. So now <laughs> if you dream something specific I want to drive a Porsche 911 Turbo through the Black Mountains in Germany then you do need a Porsche 911 Turbo and you can rent one you don't have to buy one. But if the dream is to go around the Austrian countryside and check out Eastern Europe it would be a lot of fun on an apache rtr 160 your <laughs> challenge would be to find one in europe <laughs> right hmm. i have friends who went to south america saying you know we want to tour south america and they didn't go and buy exotic machines hmm. they went and bought simple yamaha 250 cc single cylinder quasi dirt bikes hmm. you know the gentle soft road type dirt bikes not the hardcore wr type things and they had a gala time because they were simple easy to maintain when you dropped them they weren't too heavy to pick up and they were very difficult to break because there wasn't anything to break hmm. and they rode around for 6 months came back sold off that motorcycle there and came back hmm. that dream simplicity is what made it happen hmm. if the same person had thought r1200 gs lenge hmm. in colombia and then we'll ride it down into these various countries life would have gotten very very complex really really fast okay simple dreams to- i would definitely like to go for a world tour at some point hmm. where you take two and a half to 3 years off vehicle I'd take my KTM Duke 390 without thinking. Okay. It's like it's like a no-brainer. Huh. The only flip to this is halfway through. Hmm. Once I have done the difficult part, hmm. let's say I'm going to the easy parts like North America or Europe. Maybe I'd want the multi there for a right. slightly different experience. But for most of what this world has, where you want to go to difficult places, I think the 390 Duke, my 390 Duke, not the average one because I know mine so well. Hmm. It's like a close your eyes and do it. It'll be it'll get done. Hmm. The other dream is really difficult, but the machine is not important. Mm. I'd like to be able to do track days on a regular basis in multiple places outside of the Chennai, Coimbatore, mm. and BIC mm. loop. Can you go to Thailand and do a few? Can you go to mm. Malaysia and do a few? Can you go to North America and do mm. a few? That is a complicated and a very expensive dream. But mm. I've started on it. I go to these three race tracks about eight times a year, so I'm on the way there. Mm. Thanks to my job, I think I've ridden at race tracks in Thailand and in various other places already. but the idea of being it to be able to do it as a private citizen without a story sitting on your head and all of that i think that would be a nice thing to unlock what's yours for me right now is a used scooter hmm your your used scooter <laughs> yeah my dio which i had sold many years ago i want to get that back and do what with it i love scooters this the simplicity the versatility is just that combination is insane i don't know why people but does your dio have speakers it's too old for that and i'm glad for it but are you going to retrofit them <laughs> maybe led lights as well <laughs> he's kidding okay <laughs> there's no way that thing is putting Stark. speakers and lights on his dio no chance yeah so that that i know uh the other one is also i think we discussed this last time uh is also a used vehicle it's the figo 
the first mm, gen yeah, figo that, that no no it's not the figo it's the figo it's yeah, that figo it's the figo yeah the first gen it's uh, petrol and yeah that's where would you go with it wow so i had done a drive from um, pune to nagpur in the figo with my wife vanita and my son he was at that time siran was a couple of years old something mm. like that it was for my mom surprising her for a birthday so now that the maha samruddhi marg is there so i want to do that drive again in the figo and we had a really good, great time because my wife and son both get car sick and the figo they were to care of them yeah and that's a great sign of how good that car is right so i want to do that now on the new route and see how it feels like i think we're going to wrap this up and the idea is there is the dream of having something which is a vehicle and that's fine but that's not the only dream that we have because eventually you'll realize that it's something that you want to do with that vehicle which is the real dream if you think about it like that you might be able to access parts of the dream earlier than the arrival of the vehicle itself at the very basic level think of it as practice because you can always go in later 20 years later and do it in the dream vehicle there's nothing stopping you apart from the fact that usually dreams are not easy that's why they are dreams it's the nature of the beast it's the nature of the human to strive and struggle and achieve mm. and it's the nature of the dream to be difficult and far away and distant and difficult mm. but you put the two and two together i think that's a life worth living <laughs> disconnect